Welcome to Skyweek. I'm Tony Flanders from Sky and Telescope magazine, and I'll be your guide to the astronomical wonders that are currently on display overhead. Let's see what's happening in the sky from Monday, March 10th to Sunday, March 16th. The waxing gibbous moon is high in the sky on Monday, below the planet Jupiter in the constellation Gemini. It passes through Cancer on Tuesday and Wednesday, and descends to the right of Leo from Thursday through Saturday. Finally, on Sunday, the full moon is in the head of Virgo the Maiden. This is the first full week of daylight saving time, which means that many people will be getting up before sunrise. So let's see what's up in the pre-dawn sky. Three planets are on display as the sky begins to brighten. Venus, by far the brightest, is low in the southeast. Mars, the second brightest, is much higher in the southwest, above the star Spica in the constellation Virgo. And Saturn is between Venus and Mars, in the constellation Libra. Lower left of Saturn is Scorpius, my favorite summer constellation. Its brightest star is Antares, meaning rival of Mars. Antares and Mars have a strikingly similar orange-red color. Much of the time, Mars is about the same brightness, too. But right now, Mars is unusually close to Earth, so it's shining five times brighter than Antares. A month from now, Mars will be just 57 million miles away, the closest it will come until 2016. Why is the summer constellation Scorpius on display before dawn in March? The stars are constantly moving across the sky, and they take 23 hours, 56 minutes to make a full circle and return to the same spot. So, they look exactly the same at 6 a.m. on Monday, 5.56 on Tuesday, 5.52 on Wednesday, and so on throughout the week. Four months from now, those four-minute shifts will have added up to eight hours. So the stars look just the same at 6 a.m. in mid-March as they do at 10 p.m. in mid-July. The only thing that's different is the planets, which are constantly changing with respect to the stars. That's why they're called planets, which is Greek for wanderers. Let's step ahead one day at a time to see what the planets will be doing for the next four months. Venus scoots down and left out of the sky in short order, while Mars moves up and right. Saturn moves too, but very slowly. And once a month, the moon scoots lickety-split across the sky. Let's shift over so that we can watch Mars. It continues to move right until late May. Then it doubles back and heads in the opposite direction. By mid-July, it's right near the bright star Spica and the constellation Virgo, quite close to its current position in mid-March. What's going on here? On average, the planets all move right to left through the stars. That's because they all go around the sun in the same direction. However, planets also have periods when they move left to right through the stars, as Saturn and Mars are doing right now. This is called retrograde motion. Mars moves retrograde whenever it's especially close to Earth. That means that they're both in roughly the same parts of their orbits, moving in the same direction. But Earth is moving faster. So, although from the Sun's point of view they're both moving leftward through the stars, if you draw a line of sight from Earth through Mars, it points farther and farther right. But by July, Earth will be moving away from Mars, not parallel to it. So Mars's right-to-left motion will take over, and it will again appear to move right-to-left through the stars. Next week, an asteroid passes in front of the bright star Regulus and hides it from view for millions of people. Until then, this is Tony Flanders from Sky and Telescope magazine, wishing you clear skies and great views. Brought to you by Woodland Hills Camera and Telescope, serving stargazers since 1952.